<coughs> hey, everybody. We have any friends here today with us? Not yet, huh? That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and start talking. It just went to 530. So yeah, hopefully it's just, we'll... just now 530. So I hope some will come because I, I put it in the newsletter. Uh, I put it on a creative group. I put it on Beast of Boutique's thing, a, a page at uh, Facebook. I put it on community here at YouTube. And I put it on Instagram. So, you know, but here's the thing. If you find this later and you don't make the live thing <coughs> presentation, don't, don't sweat it because YouTube saves everything. So the only plus to being here when we do this is that um, I have somebody to talk to. But you know what? Lauren will talk to me, right, Lauren? That's right. I'm here. Yeah. And once you guys start joining, hopefully you guys will and mm -hmm. you guys see this, let us know how the sound is. Mm -hmm. We uh, fixed Oh, here we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. We got Karen right. Gills here, Kate Morgan, Jara, Joan Donovan. Woohoo! Hi, guys. Okay, so let us. I kind of uh, manipulated the tripods today. <laughs> so I'm not glued to the tripod it's again. Good. I hope that that mic's going to catch so, me over yeah, there. Yeah, right? so please let us know how the sound is. Hey, Miss Gloria. If it's still good. Because that means that we can continue to kind of use yeah, this tell crazy us, setup. Tell us, tell us how we sound. Are we loud? I'm not worried about Lauren because her, her voice. <laughs> My voice carries. Her voice, well, she's young and her voice carries nicely and she has a pleasant voice. You know, believe it or not, I used to, the sound Sounds is good. good. Okay, Yay. Good. I have a big family. And so there's usually about, when we're all together, there's that's, usually about 50 different yeah, conversations it, between going Between the Enos and the Hesses, I'm telling you what. Yeah, so if you want to be heard, because like scream. I said, there's like 50 different conversations going all at once. So if you want to be in part of any of those conversations, you have to kind of project. <laughs> so I know how to project hey, my Hey, Lorraine. Voice. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, and with me, as I've grown older, I mean, I even listened to my videos like 10 years ago because they're here, you know. Hi, Lorraine. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, my voice has gotten like hoarse and kind of muffled. And oh, good. Lorraine says the sound good. is good, good. too. And not very loud, so Karen says I, great. I really worry, you know, are they going to be able to hear me? Like, even like the video we did Friday, I was not pleased with the sound quality. I mean, I know you guys could hear me, but my voice just wasn't nice and clear like I wish it was. But part of that is just because I'm getting old. So I'm going to start making your drink some tea with whiskey in it right before you know, the video. I, I went looking for whiskey, and I couldn't find any in here. I'll Must bring you be, some. It's probably out there. Well, yeah, Jordan, he's got I a have whole whiskey. This, we got whiskey. Jordan's got a whole bar room. I have yummy cinnamon-flavored whiskey. I'm just, is it yeah. yummy? Yes. Well, I don't dare drink much of that because I got no tolerance. Let me tell you why. I'm not a good drinker. I like to put a little bit in apple cider and heat it up and drink mm -hmm. it and sip on it. Yeah. That sounds nice. That's yeah, nice fall time drink. Yeah. I, I know if you have whiskey, lemon juice, and honey and you mix it all up, if you've got like one of those hacking coughs at night that won't stop, it'll stop. I know that. Cause hey, I, Jasmine. Oh, Wow. Hey, Cousin Jasmine's here. Yeah. It's awesome. She wants to know about jewelry making stuff, too. Woohoo! That's great. That's great. Yep. Well, anyway, <clears throat> it's exciting today because... Yeah, this is a different type of video Yeah, today. you know, I was going to just do it all lecture style and not <laughs> show you anything because I'm like, what am I going to show them? You know, it's going to be a cacophony of mess, you know? But then I thought, no, I have to show them because i got to show them the magnet. Yep. Everybody, Lauren loaded with whiskey. I'm not loaded right now. I'll wait till I go home, Gloria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, um, but a uh, little topic. Miss Kate and I have been having discuss discussions, and I'm so happy she's here with us today, about uh, content of metal and what's important and what isn't, or is it important to us, or is it important across the road, is it important to everybody, or is it preference or what? So I know when I posted this at the group yesterday, <laughs> there's just whiskey. Now we have a party. Yeah, Kate yeah. said that. Go get some off of Mike. He probably has them over there. Maybe you got your own bottle. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, so we sort of have this um, discussion about quality and, you know, what's the best materials for making. Has it changed so Has it years? changed at all? And so she's just getting started. Jewelry, watch out. You got competition there, Lauren. <laughs> I know. Jasmine's going to catch you. 
<laughs> well, Jasmine, you'll just have to uh, discover the stuff at Cousin Brenda's place because we have the best stuff. <laughs> And it's the truth. We have stuff nobody yes, else has. Yes, we do have very good stuff. Yeah, and I've been in this business 35 years, so I know a few things. <laughs> That's the other thing. I'm learning something new every single day. And I'll have a video on Wednesday too, Jasmine. It'll probably be a little bit earlier in the afternoon if uh, you want to join me for that. Yeah, that'll be nice. I don't know when I'm doing mine on the weekend yet, but we've been just pounding it with these videos. I mean, they're not... The beautiful produced videos that Javi made because she is a pro. I mean, she worked at it for many years to get it to the way it is, and she really knows what she's doing. Um, but Javi's uh, not here with us right now, and it's not because anybody's fighting. It's just economics, and we love Javi. I had lunch with her the other day. We had a wonderful time. Um, but it's just the way it is now. I think so, life's more fun. And Lauren is the oldest employee. <laughs> she's an even older employee than Jordan. <laughs> so you know she's she's still hanging in there with me so we're doing the best we can maybe well kate thinks we have the best stuff too yeah and so does and karen. karen karen gill does too well you know <clears throat> it's just um we appreciate it guys yeah yeah so we're just gonna have to muddle along until we come up to speak it's like i was just thinking the other day you know those little things that javi would put up in the screen like not just the rubber chicken of course but, yeah. but you know she would put up the links and this and that and the other thing and we don't have a clue on that yet but we'll learn we're gonna yeah learn. actually jasmine has yeah, bought a couple of learn. my bracelets i know she has yeah <laughs> Someday if I ever have any money, I'm going to buy one, too. I like, the, I like that turquoise and black one you got. Oh, yeah, that's my uh, Arizona one. Yeah, that's a good one. I yeah, like I'll it. message you uh, later, Jasmine, and let you know about my video. Okay, good. So, we're going to talk about steel, iron, brass, and copper. Which one's the best for jewelry making? Now, I know Kate likes brass. I know that without a doubt. And as a base metal. As in a, yeah. Well, brass isn't really included with the base metal. So you know that? It's oh, not. It's no? not. No. I was surprised. But we'll talk about base metals in a minute. Okay. You know, base metals sounds like something crappy. You I'm know, already right? learning something. Yeah, base metals are not crappy. They're just base metals. <laughs> Anyways. Hi, Mommy. Hey, Jess, girl. So anyway, um, so we're talking about is something... Ferrous, F-E-R-R-O-U-S, or ferromagnetic, as opposed to something that isn't. And what that would be, would be like steel, iron, nickel, and a few other little nasty things. Cobalt, chrome. Stick a magnet on it, and it's going to pick it up. Let's find something here to show you. I got some jump rings here that are steel. <clears throat> And I'll show you what happens when we put the magnet on. This is, this, this is in the picture, so I better move this on over here. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, there they are. Okay, so here's a nice magnet that Joycey got me one time. So here, look at this. See what happens? Some of them stuck right now, and some of them didn't. And why didn't the ones not stick to other ones? It's because they are base. Hey, Ilyanka. <coughs> hey, Ilyanka. So glad you're here. Um... The reason these stick is because they're steel. That's it. The reason these didn't is because they're base metal or brass. And sometimes it's hard to know. It's even hard to get a supplier to tell you. I've been in contact with a number of them here today. And sometimes they just can't even quite tell you. But they, you know, they do the magnet tests and then they do other tests to make sure there's no lead. Or they use reliable, trusted suppliers that have certificates, and that's if they're doing, you know, Chinese or Korean. Um, and I use <clears throat> some that have been recommended to me by uh, people that have been in this business for a long time, and and uh, I trust them, and I like what they have. But sometimes product lines change, and a lot of companies might have that have been around for a while, and I'm not naming any names, but I'm one of them, though, um, have <clears throat> been around for a long time and they wrote their verbiage a long time ago. So stuff comes in and things just get reloaded without rechecking to see if this is the current correct information. Or sometimes we know it's changed and there's so much flying around here that we just the, get distracted. the girls don't get to it. You know, and here I am thinking it's done. And that's what happened with um, some 
of our jump rings. You know those jump rings everybody loves? They are not brass, they are steel. And I know it and I've known it for a long time. They got changed to steel and I don't mind. However, they need to not say brass. If they're steel, they need, I mean, that's the main thing. You tell them what it is. Then everybody makes their own decisions or they can have the discussion, you know, with the vendor or whatever. And I always want to be a good, reliable vendor. So let me talk to you about steel today and then you'll make up your own minds. And see, when I think steel, <clears throat> like the first thing that comes to my mind is like heavy duty. Like it would be very strong. It is very strong. It's way like stronger. It good it's, material. It's way stronger than anything except titanium. Um, it is super duper strong. And so it's a good it's a good material for making jewelry. Hi, Especially Ms. Millie has stuff to say. Yes, Millie's in here. She's not <laughs> supposed to be here. But good. Anyway, I'm glad you're picking up all the stuff yeah, for you on your yeah, screen. This is fix up a lot of product. That's what's what that's what there is here. Yep, that's what's on her table. A lot of product and stuff. And my hands. <laughs> so anyway. Jazz hands. Yeah. Yeah. So any anyways, um, what was I saying anyway? We're so st steel, steel steel is very, very strong. And I never appreciated that until in more recent years when I started working with 1928 Jewelry. And Mr. Bernie showed me, like practically took me by the hand and showed me, hey, look, I'm going to show you something. When we had our plating here in 1928, it was called accessory plating. They gave it up because it was just too expensive to carry on. But they did, they had accessory plating since the late 70s up until just a few years ago. And he said, we were one of the best platers in L.A. We did every kind of plating you could know. And so if you're going to do plating, you got to know metal. And let me tell you what. Steel is a very, very good material for chain. But, 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 but. It has to be properly treated. So, like, if you just take a piece of steel, you know what? And I meant to get a piece of raw steel chain and show you how crummy it looks. <laughs> But it has to be coated with copper. And if it is, and if it's done right, it will just suck up that plating, and the plating will hold tight, and it will be very durable, and it will look good for many years. Now, I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I have a great big old... I got a lot of these. I have a great big old thing here of... Copper coat. You see it? All this here chain. All this here chain. Listen to her talk. This is rope chain. Beautiful chain. But this is steel. Okay? Now, I'm pulling on it hard. If this was brass, I'd have it probably halfway apart, and I'm not that strong. I'm not going to get this apart anyway, except by cutting it. Okay, but it is solid steel underneath. Not stainless, just steel but is what they call copper clad. And that means that <clears throat> it's, it's not just plated, but it's kind of fused on there, you know? Yeah, there we go. And so um, they need this because it, it has con how you say, conducivity. It conducts in the plating bath, the color onto the metal and it sticks like crazy. I mean, They'll even do like 18K plating on stuff like this. And that's expensive plating. You say, why would they put that on a piece of crappy steel? Because it's not crappy, that's why. But it's got to be properly prepped. And this is. How old do you think this chain is? Anybody have a guess? I'd be real, really interested in hearing what you think. How old do you think this chain is? Is it like from like the 60s? Maybe. That's my guess. Oh, uh, I want to see what they say. I'm probably wrong though. Um, well, I don't want to say because I want to hear what they yeah. say. Okay. How, how old is this your chain, guesses, you girls? Guys. You know enough about chain and stuff. How old is this chain? Do you think? Can you tell by looking at it? What is this? This is a rope chain. They still make rope chain. They still make rope chain. I'll zoom in a little bit more, guys. All right, I'm going to go ahead and tell you because we don't want to be here all day and all night. I got to, she says 50 years, dear. Well, it was 50 years old when I bought it 22 years ago. Whoa. 
So this so is over 70 years old. And it looks like the day they made it. Yeah, when you see it in person, guys, it's very shiny. It's, it's kind of like, rosy color. Yeah, it's like the rose ox uh, yeah, kind of Yeah, um, and it looking. goes real good with the gingerbread stuff, too. And I think I've showed you before, it takes color really nicely. And also, if you take and you put the darkening patina on this, you would heat this first with, um, you know, maybe your uh, heat gun or blow dryer even, or your torch. could be your torch. Um, you heat it up. And then you spritz it with, because we have the spritzer bottles now, the darkening patina. You do that, and it's going to go. It's just going to turn. It's just going to turn oxidized, like right now. And then you take your steel wool over it, and you just go up, and you're going to get the most glorious, beautiful, antiqued copper chain you ever saw. Yeah, so I... It's good stuff. I it's wanted, older than that, Kate. Yeah, so I... I <clears throat> it's older than us. Subtracting... <laughs> I subtracted 70 years from 2023, and that came up with 1953. Mm -hmm. So this is from the 50s. And here's another little thing to tell you, too, because I would have at one time said, oh, no, get it out of here. I don't want it. It's probably made in Hong Kong, which, you know, there was a time I would have said, don't even touch it. But once you get to know jewelry-making components... You get a feel for what's going to be okay and what isn't. And the one thing that's not going to be okay <clears throat> is uncoated regular steel. Now, you know, this stuff here. Karen yeah, says it looks so good. It looks like it's new. It does. Uh, it does. And you know what? This is not the only roll of it. See, I've got a bunch of kidney chain down stuck in there. I just took oh, it Oh, yeah. We have dust. a bunch of this. We have so much of this. Uh, Mel sold me like a thousand foot of this wonderful thick Figaro, but then my guy who does mine, he's getting real fussy, and um, he doesn't like to plate it. I don't know why. I gotta find another plater who'll plate this because I have got Bocuse this stuff and it is good, good chain. Yeah, we have it for sale on the site. And the thing is, is I paid so little for it. Basically. <laughs> the cost of it will be the plating and shipping, you know. I mean, I'm 70. I wish I looked so good. <laughs> You're funny, Karen. That's cool. That's funny. Well, I'm not quite 75 yet, but I'll be there soon. And Kate says she's older than the chain. No. Oh. <laughs> Yes, but you look very good, just like the I, chain too, Kate, Kate. Kate, you're not older than the chain, are you? <laughs> well, anyway. Anyway, that's just the thing. That's the thing. So, anyway, the chain looks pretty good. All the chain I have like this, which is a lot... I've got thousands of foot of copper coat because I always bought it. It was, you know, inexpensive. And, yeah, I'll get that. I'll get it plated. And then what's the space that says, I don't want really to play that anymore. So now, okay, fine. You're not the only uh, game in town. I will find somebody who will, but I haven't yet. Because, this is beautiful for fall, too. Yeah. But honestly, this, if you like the copper color of it, mm -hmm. I wouldn't play it. You could add a little bit of color, like a little bit of patina gilder's paste on this would be amazing. No, I think it's beautiful. Or like the I torch, said. and then it, torch it, put the darkening patina on it, let it cool, and then go back with your steel wheel and just keep, you know, just run that chain, run that chain through it. Just, let me get on camera. Just run that chain through it, you know. And I'll, like I'll show you ox. one day. I'll show you one day, and you're going to be like, oh, man, do I want that? Because it's, it's fantastic. Nothing wrong with this. Okay, but we get this mindset that, oh, that's crappy and we don't want that, you know, because we heard for years, and it's, this is mostly my fault, I think, too, because a lot of you guys have been following me a long time. And what did I say? We found it on the website. This is only by brass. Chain, steel chain will rust. Well, I have seen rusted steel chain, but it was really nasty chain that wasn't properly treated. If you work with a good plater, if you buy quality products like I do, you know, well, there you go, Karen, we'll talk. It's, a, it's on the site, Karen. You I, can, don't, I don't know. I don't or know do we I, need to I, upload some more? I don't some know more. if this is, there's a little bit of copper coat on there. but We most, have a rope copper chain. Most of my copper coat 
is is not on there because it's like people don't really accept it very well, you know. Because I think I had an order a week or so that had did some. It? Well, yeah. it was a little bit then, but you know, it's like I said, I haven't really put a lot of it on because I think it's my own fault. You know, we I told everybody, them. oh, that's crappy stuff. You don't want that. It's not true. It's very strong. It plates like a dream. If you put okay, Kate um, wants to know. What? Sorry to interrupt. Without the plating, will it rust? No. It's copper coated. This has been in my garage for 22 years. And before that, it was in a basement of a big warehouse. And the air in that warehouse is just positively acrid. You can't hardly really stand a bee in there. So it's kind of humid. So, and that's not a good place to store jewelry parts of any kind. But it's a warehouse. They don't care. You know, here it is. People buy it. You know, that's the uh, attitude. So that's where I got it. And it looked just like this the day I bought it. Even coming out of that crappy old basement. Who knows how long it was there. So, no, it's... No, because this is treated. It's properly copper coated. Now, if you buy steel that's not... Boy, I wish I could find a piece of that for you. I know I had some. Uh, it's like, uh, you don't want to use that. It, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look like anything. It's just, you know, steel, like, when it's fresh and new... It looks bright. It looks very bright. Same as the pewter. You know, we were all surprised. Oh, raw pewter is bright. You know, um, steel is too. Very silvery. But it doesn't take that long, wait for long if it's not copper coated properly. And they do this in several, they do it by special process. Um, and they do several um, dips on it. So. I myself am not coloring plain chain. I'll leave it to those who enjoy it. I want it already done. Well, that's fine, Gloria. I prefer it that way, too, because I just want to go ahead and make something. But I have to say, when I do go down to my workshop downstairs and I start playing around with this stuff, I lose myself because I, I love metal and I like to see what it'll do. An and experiment. I, I think I, you know what, I'm going to post on the group. There's a video. There's a video that I made a while back on uh, putting color on copper coat. So, you know, well, I'll get that for you, you know. So that's good. So anyway, <clears throat> the, the ferrous metals are steel, iron, brass. No, not brass. I take that. Steel and iron, nickel. Steel, iron, nickel. And copper? No. Oh, man, I wrote it down. There's four of them. I'll get there. I'll get it back for you. I'll write it down for you. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Karen, let me know if you find it on the site. If not, then we'll try to put some yeah. up. Yeah. For you guys. Yeah. Iron. Oh, Mom says we do have it. Yeah. Okay, Karen, the yeah. item There's number. There's a SKU number. C-H-N-O-8-7-9-0. Yeah. Okay. Iron is the one I hate. Now, if you do that uh, painting with fire type with the enamels and stuff like that, that you want iron for that because it, it really, really works good with those enamels. Better than, in fact, it's hard to get brass to hold it. It'll slide right off. So iron works good for that. Other than that, I'm not a fan. <clears throat> now, I do buy sometimes a glass bead chain that has iron head eye pins on it to hold it together, you know. And... Um, it's been okay for me. What you might do if you buy that, because it's so inexpensive, is take and uh, run a little bit of that jewelry shield stuff. We, it's, we don't have that anymore because you're still stop making it, but there's another company now. And uh, I think we have some in stock. If not, I'll get some right away. Just paint it. Kate says cobalt metal. Oh, yes, cobalt is one of them. Chromium, not chromium, chrome is another one. But the ones we mostly see are, you know, iron, steel, and nickel. Nickel is very, very strong, too. It's not a bad metal. Oh. But people are allergic to it. That's okay. the problem with it. But That's you know what? Problem. You know what? Oh, thank you. Thank you, Gloria. So, anyway, um, it's very, very strong, but people are allergic to it. And then something else, too, you know, stainless steel, which I like. For example, I will show you. These are stainless steel. I don't know if the magnet will pick them up. It shouldn't. Um, is there any kind of like a silver metal that like will rust or turn green or just like not good or no? Brass is what turns green. Brass is what turns green? Mm -hmm. See, oh. look, it's not picking this up. So no steel. 
This, yeah, this is steel. It's stain, oh, it is steel? It's stainless steel, and it's not plated either. But stainless is like that. Now, once in a while, you get some stainless, or they say it's stainless, and it picks up probably as a lower grade. Um, we do some... Th there's two grades that are really good for jewelry. One's 304 and one's 316. 316 is the best one because it has a, be a metal in it called molybdenum in it, and it's very, very strong. Um, 304 is what's called... I wrote it down, authentic steel that has a trace of nickel, and 316 has even more nickel in it, but oh. it's not picking up. So that surprised me when I read that because, well, don't they use stainless steel, like, you know, if you get your ears pierced or some of the put stainless steel studs in or whatever, it's supposed to be hypoallergenic? Well, maybe not. Maybe not. You know, if you're super sensitive to nickel, stainless steel may not work for you. So isn't that interesting? Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Um, so that you know. And also, if you see the imprint on, say, a piece of finished jewelry that's stainless, if you see the imprint TK316, that means it's made of grade 316 stainless. And that's just about the best. I think it has some titanium in it, too. You know, so it's an alloy. It's not all just... Well, steel's an alloy, too. It all comes off of iron. Okay? But then you got the non-ferrous metals. The two biggest ones that we use a lot are brass and copper. Okay? Now, copper is not an alloy. That's one of your, you know, basic elements. You know, if you take chemistry, you have to learn all those little abbreviations and stuff. Copper is a, a something comes straight out of the ground, but brass doesn't. Brass is an alloy, meaning it's mixed with something else. Our brass is what's called rich low brass, and it is 85% copper and 15% zinc. So... Because the copper content is high, raw brass pieces or raw brass pieces that aren't plated well or aren't sealed well, if you use raw brass and you didn't seal it, they can verdigree. So they do the opposite thing. Steel rusts if it's not prepared right. Brass verdigrees. Now, some of us like that look. But I know a lot of you like vintage jewelry, and have any of you ever seen a Miriam Haskell piece where it's all falling apart and the wire is all corroded? That's because they use 32 gauge brass wire, which is way too fine. It won't hold up, and it wasn't sealed. And so when people <clears throat> perspired, or they didn't store it correctly, or they got it in water, there you go. Third degree. Well, I mean, I've showed you... How many videos do I have showing you how to bring up verdigree on brass? You know how it happens. You've probably done it. Because I like that look for certain things, but not on findings. So, um, meaning like jump rings, you know, head pins, eye pins, clasps, stuff like that. I like it maybe on a brass stamping. You know, mm -hmm. um, because it gives it some character. Or it looks like it's like it was done on purpose. Oh, so have you guys ever seen like where they made um, like an older building and it has like a copper dome roof on it? In Warren, Ohio, the city where I was born, they have a copper dome roof on the courthouse. And it's all like that beautiful teal green color. And that's because it's solid copper and it has verdigreed over time. And it's absolutely lovely. If I had a piece of metal like that, I'd be in my glory thinking, what do I want to make with it, you know? But that's what happens to copper, it, it, it verdigree. So brass being a copper type alloy, there you go, there you go. Uh, but it is an excellent material for jewelry makers. Most jewelry makers prefer it. Um, and then copper is wonderful because it's very malleable. I don't know if you've ever noticed the difference between brass and copper. Copper's like super soft and like most of the um, costume type wire that we buy to do wire working and stuff that comes in all the colors. Like I have at my site. Um, it is so malleable and it, it wraps beautifully. You know, copper is a pure metal and that's why it does that. But brass, having that bit of zinc in there, it's stiffer 
And so it can be a little bit harder to work with. So if you're working with wire, you won't like to work with brass wire as much as you will with copper because it's going to resist you a little bit because it's an alloy and that's why. Um, so, you know, it's, it goes to choice. There's a lot of iron stuff out of there. Most of it's imports. I try to avoid it. Um, if you get really well plated iron, it's not too bad. And I'll show you an example of that. This is a very popular chain that we carry on our website. You might really recognize it. It has that, you know, what they call cast beads or Tibetan silver, which is just a name. It doesn't mean like German silver doesn't mean anything. It's nickel, you know. This is just a metal alloy. And it's not <clears throat> where's my now. Look at that. You know why that came up? It's not the Tibetan silver beads. You know what it is? It's these these uh, connectors here, this wire connector, it's not iron in this case, it's steel. But it comes up, it's nicely plated, matches, it's gonna be fine, I don't think you have any problem with it, but yeah, that's, you can tell, it's got some stuff in there. Now, there's this chain, which I love, I don't even know if we have any more, but this is so beautiful. Um, this is like hand wrapped black, matte black wire with little coppery, bronzy beads on it. And I would, looking at this, I would almost say, oh, there's got to be steel. Come on, people, you know. But well, look. Nothing. Mm -mm. That's brass. Not doing it. Not fun? It's interesting. Now, here's a big revelation. I just did this today. And how long have I carried bead and link chain? I mean, it's a favorite. Mm -hmm. And that's the silver rush silver plate. Yeah, it's, it's, this is, well, no, this is right. an, it's an imitation rhodium. We don't, oh. I don't silver silver plate my, my chain, my findings, nothing, because silver silver plate is so, so, so expensive. And you can get other colors and findings that match just good, that are excellent quality, and they'll be fine. You don't, don't need to do that. So I save it for doing the brass stampings. Okay. Where it's real visible, mm -hmm. you're going to see it. The Yanka says she doesn't like the verdigris. She wants it to be stationary. Everybody's different. Like some people like antique gold, say. Other people want shiny gold. Mm -hmm. Some people like antique silver. Some people want shiny silver. It's like, yeah. for example. I like all the shiny and bright. Yeah. I like the bright silver. I like yeah. the bright gold. I like the rose gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this this rose here. That's silverware, silver. That's plates. silverware, silver. But see how it goes with the imitation. Well, you guys know this. We've yeah. been using it for a long time, you know. But look. And the silverware, silver plate is nickel free. This is brass. Correct. Yes. Yes. All of our plating finishes are nickel free except one. The gold one. Because my plater will not do a gold finish that doesn't have a tiny bit of nickel in it. Because he says. It's not quality. The nickel makes it strong. You'll see, oh, nickel-free finish. He says, this is the stuff that people, their, their skin acids eat right through it. It doesn't stay nice. He says, people want it to stay nice. So the way I do it, he says, is he gets the chain, he cleans it up real good, or whatever piece it is, the stamping, whatever. And then he puts a light, very light, only half the copper, only half the nickel that other people do. He puts a light coating of that on it, and then he plates Hi, it, he plates over it heavy. So that's kind of like what they do with the copper over the steel. He's kind of sealing it out, and um, nobody's ever complained. If they so have, that's the twenty-two carat brass. The carat twenty-two carat okay. satin gold or the RGP, whichever you want to call it. It has a trace, not a lot, of nickel in the plate, not in the metal. The metal is brass. But I'm going to show you something, for instance. Okay, so now this stuff, this this beaten link chain, how beautiful it is. It's imitation mm -hmm. rhodium. I love imitation rhodium. Real rhodium, you know, is more expensive than gold. I don't know if you knew that. But this is imitation rhodium. Anyway, so look at this. Oh, it picks up. It doesn't pick it up strong, but it kind of moves. So it has steel? No. This is brass base, absolutely. I checked the other colors I had. It's not picking up. What's doing it then? Yeah. It's the plating. Oh. I forgot rhodium plating has a little bit of nickel in it. It's picking up the plating. It's mm. not the metal. It's the plating. That's why it doesn't pick it up real hard. 
Ayanka wants to know what's the metal that corrodes white. I don't really know. I d I don't know. Um, I don't think I've ever seen that. I don't know. You know. If I could get up and go to the computer, I'd go ask it. But I can't right now. So I'll have to look it up and tell you if there is one. Can you, you want to Google it? Yeah, I'm going to Yeah, look. Lauren's going to Google it and see what we can find out. Because if there is one, we'll know. Hey, Michelle, while well, I've got your attention, do you know you won the gift the other day? I don't think you realize that. Yay, Michelle! Yeah, she won a gift for the other weekend. I don't have one every time. I'm not doing one this time. We had one... Um, on Saturday, and Michelle Zinc. wanna, so you need to contact me. Zinc does. It says white rust is, is a, a rapid, rapid localized, localized corrosion attack on zinc, zinc that usually appears as a voluminous thick, white, thick deposit. white deposit and completely remove zinc localized area with result in reduction in equipment life. Yeah, so hmm. Now I'm gonna have to find out what caused that because I've it not says, seen that. Okay, it. this I'm says not seen that. what. White rust can form when zinc is exposed to hydrogen and oxygen. This combination creates a zinc hydroxide as opposed to the iron oxide, which is the common a form. common form of It's like of the rust. opposite type of rust, I guess. Huh. Well, I've not seen that in jewelry products, and maybe... Yeah, Michelle it, even said probably zinc. Yeah, she said zinc. Well, you're right. You're right. Now, the thing about zinc is... Zinc is not ferromagnetic. It doesn't go with the steel, iron, and all that stuff, chrome. It goes with the brass copper. And guess what else does? Lead. And there's no lead in my stuff, I'll tell you that right now. Unless it's trace, and I'll tell you how that gets there. When they make brass alloy, sometimes there's a tiny bit of naturally occurring lead that is created in that process. It's so small it doesn't hardly measure, but it's worth knowing about. Um, what you want to look for when you're looking for metals, you want to see your vendors say they are EU compliant. Does anybody, does anybody uh, know what EU compliant is? EU compliant is a European Union compliant. In Europe, I've had many, many people come to me and say, do you have certification paperwork to prove that there is no lead, cadmium, or nickel in your stuff? I'm like, no. As I can tell you that the brass stampings are, are compliant. They're totally compliant. I can tell you that. Um, and all of our plating is except for the gold. I can tell you that, but no. She says, well, you need to get some some uh, certification or something. So I looked into it. It was blame expensive. I couldn't afford it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> this is rough because I'd like to help them out. But I just told her I can't afford that kind of certification. But that's what I guess some of these Chinese factories have. Because I do look for that when I buy there. So I understand. Um, we don't do a lot of European business anymore. We used to do about half of our business used to be European. We lost it because... Um, the shipping prices went up so hideously that now they don't want to pay it. So I don't know where they're getting their stuff. I, maybe I don't want to know. I know they're not getting it from the U.S., which is just, it's sad, you know? It's just sad, but that's how it is. Okay, I have yeah. a question. What? So I don't know if it has to do with these metals, but what is, you guys probably all know, I'm still learning. What is Tierra Cast? Tierra Cast is a company. That has gone out of business. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. That's pewter, and it's from... Excuse pewter, me. okay. Mm -hmm. And their facility is in Santa Rosa, California, and they are closing out all their stocks. If you like Tierra Cast and you have an account with them, uh, you might want to get in touch and see what they have left. I have an account. I bought from them direct off and on for years, but... There were just a few things. Like, I loved their crimps. Their pewter crimps were awesome. Um, they were fat and big and they looked kind of hammered. And, and uh, they were great. They were great for cord and things like that. So now I'm not going to be able to get those anymore. 
Um, I but, asked because you gave me some mermaids to load for Etsy, the, and they're Tierra Cat. They are so Tierra Cat. Just, they're Tierra Cat. I, I, was I, I liked a lot of their pewter charms because they were usually double sided. Yes, these are double sided. Yeah, so you can you can look for them. They're going to go on Etsy. Yes. They'll and, probably go up tonight. And, uh, I'm going to be loading I'm, a lot I'm tonight. selling them in pairs, so you'll have front and back, you know, and they're, they will mirror. So they're very nice, and I only have, like, five pairs, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. Actually, no they're very cool because these are different double-sided mm -hmm. because the front side, so it's a mermaid holding a starfish, mm -hmm. and you guys will see this. Keep an eye on Etsy tonight, guys. I'm going to be loading, like, all night tonight. And you know, guys. And I, there's a sale. And I need to mention, too. Our stuff right now is when you hit $25, $25 in your card at Etsy, Etsy's going to give you, because we have it programmed in there, you know, it's programmed in to happen. It's going to take 15% off your cart at 25 But Etsy has this cool thing that's going on now that if you run your cart up to 40 not only will you get my discount, but they're giving everybody 10 bucks back. Mm -hmm. Now, this is today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow and Wednesday. Wednesday. And then, pfft, Poof, bang on. There ain't no more. So if you want to go check out our listings um, and buy from us, you'll get our primary discount. Plus and then another coupon on top. There's, yeah. So yeah. you could make out like a band. And the nice thing about it is it's like a promo they're doing to not only attract more business, but also to help their vendors. Because I think they already ask us to give back an awful lot. You know, all oh, your stuff costs too much, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then they tell us, well, jack up the price to compensate for the free shipping. And you know what? If you're making finished goods, that could work. But I sell little tiny jewelry parts. It does not work. So it's like, yeah, I don't like that. But anyway, look for EU compliant on your metals. Because you see that? You have the gold standard. If it says EU compliant, you have to worry about it. But still, if it's base metal... Um, if it's brass, copper, whatever, it, it's the best because they have very, very strong rules about that. They can get fined. If you make jewelry over there and you sell it and it's not EU compliant, you can get in big trouble. So that's why they want the certificates. Okay, so our brass stampings are 19 or 24 gauge of brass. 19 is what they call gilding weight brass and that's what they use to enamel on a lot. Or the old French stuff which is red red brass. It's not my regular 8515 low rich brass. Um, That's the, considered like the patina French. brass, right? When it has that red. Mm, you know, I used to always say so, but then I had to learn about it and, and to come to find, you're welcome, Karen. Um, come to find out that no, there's red brass. And that's what the French people used. So a lot of that looks old stuff. What it is is the dyes that they used to make it old, but they might only made it 30 years ago. You know, but still it's pretty wonderful because we don't have those dyes here, you know. The closest thing we have are a few things uh, that a company that's going out of business now used to make because they were five generations deep in the business and they were French. So they were able to get some of those old dyes and sneak them into pockets over here and, and uh, retranslate them into something that could be used in the United States. And so some of the pieces that come from that company, well, that came from that company, um, were kind of Frenchy looking, you know. But, oh, well, that's the story on that. So, um, yeah, it says here, stainless steel is chromium, nickel, and titanium. So it has nickel in it. But you know what? If it's an eye pin or a head pin, I wouldn't worry about that. If it's a jump ring, I wouldn't worry about that. If it was an ear wire, oh yeah, I'd worry about that. Because it's going to go right into Through your you, ear, yeah. you know. Or if it's chain, and you know somebody might have a strong allergy, then, you know, I may be concerned. But I have to tell you, with this feed and link chain, I've never had any complaints. In fact, um... One of my customers, I'm not going to mention any names, but somebody you guys all know, um, she asked me one day, hey, that cementation rhodium, doesn't it have nickel in it, you know? I'm like, you know, I haven't been thinking about that. I should, yeah, it does. I just wasn't thinking, you know? 
Because it happens. You've got a lot of stuff going on, and I'm trying to make stuff and teach stuff and source stuff. And, and you know, it just gets like you forget some st stuff sometimes. So I says, yeah. And she says, well, I just kind of wanted to know. She says, because I'm not going to stop buying it. Not one of my customers in all these years has ever complained about it making them break out. And none of mine have either. So um, it must be just trace. And that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so let me think. What else do I have to tell you that's really, really important? Oh, did you know that German silver is just nickel? You guys knew that. German silver you see a lot in the, like, um, you know, late Victorian, Edwardian type jewelry, like those mesh bags and stuff up into the 20s. They had a lot of German silver in them. And it, it was very acrid smelling. I don't like it either, but it was is nickel. It's like made from nickel sheet, so... In case you didn't know that. Um, what about gunmetal? Gunmetal, you know, I used to always think there was nickel in gunmetal plating. It just depends where you buy it. Some has it, some doesn't. And so, but I like it. It's, um, you know, it's kind of that charcoal gray and it's glossy. It doesn't, I don't think it blends real good with matte black. I don't have any here to show you. But, because this is matte black. I like matte black. Mm-hmm, I do too. But here, down here. But um, gunmetal is kind of like silvery black. Mm-hmm. You know? And um, the gunmetal I used to, was exposed to in the past, um, always had a little bit of nickel in the finish because that's what makes it gunmetal. It's not, the metal is not gunmetal. It's a color of plating finish. And um, I checked with my fella, and he says, I don't use nickel in that. I'm like, huh. But I just don't see any need to do a line of gunmetal when we have matte black and everybody likes it. And I just can't do everything alone. No, but, but occasionally I know we do sell a yeah. little bit of gunmetal. Yeah, so I, I yeah. once in a while I'll get some, like, I might go into one of my vendors, and they're having, like, a big fat sale on it, you know, and it's like a big... It's a big fat, why not, you know? So then I'll, I'll get some, but, you know, this is another thing I want to show you, too. You know, I've got these little, um, these are gunmetal, gunmetal color. They almost look black. Um, little tiny uh, rondelles. I don't know if these are on yet or not, but anyway. But anyway, so I got them, and I thought, oh, I'm sure this is going to pick up, you know, so I tried. Her gunmetal picks up magnetic. Well, maybe it's the older stuff. I mean, it depends. Because I was reading about it, and I guess it depends who plated it. But my guy doesn't do that. And um, where I buy my stuff, it says they're, they don't, it doesn't have it, you know. But um, I was always of the opinion, don't buy it because it's got a nickel on it. But not always. So I guess I guess you got to ask. And if they can't tell you, they better be able to find out, right? So anyway, so look at this. It's not picking nope. up. Oh, no, it did. It picked oh, one up. Oh, one. one. Picked one up. So maybe there's a little bit in there, huh? Let me try it again. Because I tried this before. It, it just, just went. one. Just one. Maybe one has <laughs> the rest Just of one. Them. Let me see. Let me keep trying that. Yep, okay. picked up another one. So maybe it's just the way they're laying. So yeah, they're still. I thought for sure they were, but it didn't pick them up earlier. And I'm like, huh, that's amazing. So anyway. And then the, you know, the pewter Kate stuff. Kate says she loves the matte black. Oh, yeah. 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 We have some more coming in real soon. But I only gave them a half order because I lost the other side of my order, so I have to send that into. See, there's none in that. And this is this is zinc that's been hand antiqued over at 1928. They did not make this part. Because I was after him. I want to buy this. I want to buy this. You can find it. Finally, he said to me, it's an import. I said, what? He says, yeah, a, a little bit of my uh, pewter that I buy is um, imported, and we didn't make it here. I said, is that right? Huh. Well, I like to find some of that. <laughs> I might one day. I might one day. But anyway, the only way I can get it now is when he has some throwback. But anyway, it's still very, very nice. And I love it. Just love it. And I'm so sad that I can't get that product anymore. But oh well. Well, I can get it, but I can't I can't afford it. So let's see. Is there something else here I wanted to say? Yeah, copper coat, which is this this rope chain I showed you, 
or copper clad, some people call it. It is what they call a bimetallic finish. It's high strength. Um, it has high conductivity when it's put on top of steel and the corrosion is, is very, very resistant. And it must be, because like I say, a lot of the copper coat I got out, I got out, out of a dank basement where it had been there for a long time and it looked just like this when I bought it. It wasn't it darkened. So it wasn't something. darkened at all. Not look. one bit. Look at that beautiful color. Oh yeah, now you can see the rose ox. Yeah, it's really rosy. Yes, it? which I love. Yeah. But you know, I would just say too. <clears throat> but look at look at this thing of chain that we have here. Yeah, it's finished. <laughs> I don't know how much is in it, but it's That's finished. Crazy. It, and this it's is a like, volcano of chain. Th this is a small amount of what I have. I have so much <laughs> of this stuff. It's nuts. But if I was gonna do this and put it on jewelry, this would go good with our gingerbread. Um, I would take the clear sealant that we have from Sculpt Nouveau, which is actually Swelligant. Swelligant was Sculpt Nouveau. I knew that from day one. Um, I was glad when Christy made that line because I wanted to do it, but I couldn't stand the thought of bottling it. So she did it, and I was happy to buy it from her and demonstrate it. But um, now she's not doing it. And I don't want to pay what Avis wants for it. It's too much. So I get mine from the company. And so I have a little on the side. I'm never going to have a lot of it because I just don't think I'd sell that much. And plus, it's in a bigger bottle and it costs more. But I love that spray bottle. I love, love, love that spray bottle. So I would just lay this out and spray it and let it dry, hang it up, you know, with a clothespin or something. And it'd be good to go. So this does need sealed. Um, I would this I chain. would say so. You know, maybe not. I don't know. I kind of tend to I mean, to like think, you said, this has been sitting out. I Yeah, but the thing is, it's when it gets on your skin. And say your skin gets a little damp or something, you know. I kind of think it might make a mark because this is copper coat. Brass chain will do that. You guys know that. Raw, raw brass chain will turn your skin green. Not everybody's, but a lot of people. And so... You know, raw brass is, what, 85% copper. So why wouldn't this do it? Because it's really thick copper over the steel. So this might do that, too. So all I would say is you got to seal it. And Better safe than sorry. you, you got to seal it, and it's not hard. Especially, you can use the matte spray lacquer, too, but I really like the clear coat that I get from Sculpt Nouveau because... Like, if you put spray lacquer on it, it will make your links stiff. And you'll have to go through and just break it up, break it up, break it up, break it up, you know. And that's not a lot of fun. So if you do the clear coat, you would have to do that. It's just, it's just great stuff. Spread, spread's done. Yeah, just let it dry. I'd just take, like, a clothespin and hang it on a line or something like that. Oh, wow. So anyway, I think, does anybody have any... Um, comments or, or questions questions or anything we like that wrap up we've been going through all of our findings all day today and i you know i yeah we're making at sure first that they when all i started match. thinking about this in case Burbage. kate and i started thinking about talking about it here the other day i kind of like freaked out a little bit like oh man i don't know if <laughs> this is going to be awful if i check this stuff and find out you know that i've got to redo a lot of it, but um, I didn't. Mostly it was the the jump rings that everybody loves. Everybody loves those jump rings. I've never had one complaint about those jump rings. I love those jump rings. Those 18 gauge ones that are plated to match our chain and our lines. They're still though. They're copper coated steel. So if you don't like that, then you need to get brass. So here's what I'm going to do. Because um, my stuff is mostly that or I have some that's base metal and base metal is not going to be brass it's probably copper but it's not steel base metal is not steel so um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm looking into buying a brass line of jumps in case somebody wants them so I'm gonna have to like kiss a lot of toads first I think to find hands and prints on that because I would prefer maybe to buy it in the U.S. if I can. And I got some quotes this morning, and they were nasty. They were just high. I think stupid high, to be honest with you. And um, But they were plated already, which was a good thing. But I just, 
uh, you know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out and I'm going to get six millimeter ones, probably in brass socks and silver color and maybe a gold finish and maybe matte black. Lori says she loves the jumps, that they're sturdy. Yeah, they are. That's because they're steel. They're stronger than brass, you know, but some people don't like that. So it would be nice to have that option for them. Long time ago, the reason those listings said that at all to begin with is because long time ago, I got all my jumps from one U.S. house. But they made you buy three to five pounds at a time. And until, you know, I played all my colors and all that, it's just like, I can't afford to do this, people. You know, I I can do like a pound at a time. I mean, a pound, a pound of six millimeter jump rings is a lot of jump rings. It's like, I don't know, 4,000 jump rings, maybe 3,500. So, I mean, that's, that'll last me a while, you know. But I got to do it across the colors, too, so we have that. So I'm just kind of um, looking around a little bit so I can have a brass line, but for now... Diane worked on the jump rings today, and she, the ones that are steel, copper clad steel, that are plated to match our stuff, uh, she's got that all worked out now. And she says she thinks she can go into the category verbiage too. I don't really know how to do that because that changed after Javi redid the site, but she thinks she can do it. So we'll see if my site still works later. <laughs> I just have to be, I just have to laugh about stuff. It's like, go ahead, kick me, you know? One more thing, whatever. But I thought you guys might find this um, discussion kind of interesting. So, um, anyway, the chemicals in ones changes things, yeah, sometimes. And, you know, you know the thing is, too, is um, the plater I use, he's about the best plater in the United States. That's the truth. That's why my stuff, my stampings that are plated cost more than other people's. Because the price of brass has gone up with everything else, and so have his prices. And so I'm paying, you know, premium, premium prices for everything, and I can't make as much on them as I used to, but everybody still wants a discount. I don't blame them. I want one too, but I'm not getting one. So I'm I mean, I'm still buying, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy even more. I still think it's a good thing to have. You know, I'd rather buy the brass at this time than the pewter. And uh I'm going to build that up again, but yeah, it's just, you know, everything's gone. Well, on. the brass is fun to colorize, Yeah, too. I think you can do more with the brass because it's malleable. Like those, you know those great big 5 by 2 plaques of filigree that I sometimes get, and you can bend them into a cuff. A cuff. You know, I mean, you can do all kinds of stuff with that. You know? But I feel like so sometimes things. people don't want to mess with the silver because it is pricier, so you don't want to, like, well, mess with the finish, whereas and, brass... And I don't buy those in silver either, except I have one lady who'll come, like, every two or three years, and she will buy enough of those so that I can afford to maybe buy a dozen of them and have them to sell to my people. But the last time I had them, they were 22 bucks a piece. Mm-hmm. And people resist that. But at the same time, our silver is so wonderful, it's the next thing to sterling. In fact, that finish is so strong that it will react to liver of sulfur and ammonia the same way that sterling will because it's that much silver on it. In fact, they are fine silver. That means not 0.925. They are 0.99. Fine silver, almost pure silver. They take these pieces and they dunk them down into that bath. It's pure silver in there. Can you imagine? Yeah, it's expensive, you know, but it's the best and nobody wants such cheap finishes. Once they had them, man, they were hooked, you know, so here we go. Anyway, so. Yeah, see, mo most people don't want to color the silver, Glory. I don't want to color, color silver either because yeah. you know what, Glory? I've never found a good way to do it. That's why I like doing it on the brass. Now, I found a good way to do gold. You know, if you want to mess around with it, I found a good way to do brass ox, chocolate brass. That's not a big stretch. Um, but silver, I can't make it look right. So. Hi, Bonnie. If I'm going to have, just got to do some. Bonnie Williams, how you doing? Thanks for coming. So anyway, I think we're about done for today. You can go back and rewatch oh, this. Oh goodness, though, I've been on here for an hour. I only want to be on here for half an hour. <laughs> Kate says thank you anyway. for taking the time to oh, share all I'm, this. Oh, I'm very happy to. I needed to know, you know, I need the review myself, you know, so we just kind of did that together. So anyway, so um, we're working on ours and I'm going to see, you know, what I can get and 
Um, we all need to ask the right questions, you know, and be sure that, you know, the updates have been made. Because I know there are other companies like mine, maybe even a little bigger than mine, that, that have things and they say they're brass, and they don't really seem to be anymore. And I think that's from, like, back in the day when everything was brass, and, you know, then they just started getting more materials in and just reloading it and never change the verbiage because then that can happen, you know. So you just got to ask the right questions, I guess. So anyway. So anyway, thank you so much for coming out today, girls. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. I'm, I'm enjoying doing, the, doing more of the the uh, live videos. They take longer, but I think we get more They're done. more lively. They are. Because you get to have a discussion. Yeah. Dara wrote me the other day. She said, oh, boy, was that fun, you know. And I think so, too. So, and we bounce off each other, you know, so it's, it's all good. So, anyway, thanks for coming today. I will have a video Wednesday. If anybody makes an order this week and wants a piece of this stuff. Write it in your comments. Uh, write in your comments and I'll send you out two or three feet because I can. <laughs> Woohoo! I have a boatload of this stuff, you know. I mean, this is not the only one I have. So. How's that for a little yeah, gifty? Yeah. There you so go, there, Karen. I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I give it to you. Want some? You have to buy it. I'll give you some, and you can play with it and see what you think. We but, do yeah. have eighteen feet that is currently in stock on the site. If they oh, do want some, yes. Well, well we that got, was the SKU number that we put. Well, up. we got more than eighteen feet of that. What do you say? Yes. And this looks about to be like three three fifty. Maybe. But I will let you guys know. It's probably going to be early afternoon on Wednesday. You're welcome, Kate. Um, I'm thinking probably between one and two. But I will give a shout out to all you guys on the group just to let you know what mm. time for sure. I'm going to show mm. some new products that have come in again. We're going to have another product video. I know mm. you guys like those. Mm. Like I said, again, keep an eye out on our Etsy shop because I will be loading all night. Yeah. Um, and I got distracted. The mermaids, so the mermaids I told you that are going up tonight, they're double-sided. They're that tiara cast that we talked about. And these are cool double-sided ones because it's a mermaid with a starfish. And so you see the front side of her, and she's holding the starfish. And then when you flip her over, it's her back side. So it's mm. double sided. So it's not. Yeah, it, I've it's had like, those before. Yeah, it's yeah. like completely finished. Yeah, it's got so piece. much detail on it. I always raved about 1928 that way. And those are coming but, in pairs. Uh, but Paracast had some really, really good pieces, too. I didn't think they were the quite the same caliber of 28, but uh, they still they had some pieces that really. We're talking. You know, yeah, so remember that sale with Etsy so, what started right. this afternoon, and it goes through Wednesday. Right, so and also on the site, um, we still have that 15 for all, which means it's 15, F-O-R-A-L-L, -L, I think. It's, you know what? If you forget it, go on the website, and that pink sliding bar at the top of the homepage, it's there. I the put banner. The, I put the codes there every week. And... Um, you put that in your coupon box, you're going to get 15% off your entire order, and I don't care if it's a little order. No minimum. There's no minimum, so that's a nice thing. I can't always do that, but, you know, I just kind of, kind of started thinking, you know, enough small orders add up, and it'll help my bottom line, and it'll help everybody else's, too. And so, then don't forget she's going to give this, too, samples, yeah, if you, if if you put it in your comment you box. for it. Yeah, when are they going up? She says tonight. They're going to go up tonight, Gloria. She says it tonight. Yep, I took a bunch of pictures already. They're already ready to go, so and I'm just going to be loading, and loading, loading. We have loading. a st bunch of stuff coming in, too, for the site real quick. Yep. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. There's a lot of good stuff coming up at BC Boutiques, and I'm going to be showing you how to use it. We'll probably have more videos than anything. We had, like, four mm -hmm. last week. Yeah, we and videos. I'll be doing more reels, yeah, too, yeah, as yeah. the weeks go so, on. yeah. So, anyways, so thank you so much. You guys Yay! are wonderful. You guys are wonderful. Thanks for coming out and supporting us today. And now I need to go eat something. <laughs> <laughs> you guys probably do, too. Yeah. yeah. All right. And we'll, go, right we'll all go have our whiskey now. <laughs> yeah. Kick back and have some whiskey with lemon in it and honey or whatever.